in now, you know. Now then people say, what is good for me? Do first. Huh? Don't, don't talk about my children. When, when I grow old also, I cannot rely on my child. Huh? When, when people say like that, it means that they are not thinking of future generation. They are thinking about me, myself now. Okay, now. Nah? A lot of people say, I don't hope for your children. Take care of you. Agree? Agree? <laughs> Agree? <laughs> So if you have that mentality, then you talk about yes. Now, so how spacing if you were to use to activate your wealth is mainly for your future generation. You too late already, huh? Like they will. Yeah? Because if you want to use house spacing, you have to actually enhance for a period of time. But at that period of time, you don't have that time. Huh? You need it urgently, you can't wait so long. <laughs> you can't wait so long. <laughs> huh? How long is long? 7 to 14 years. So, next generation. Huh? True. And the longest is 21 years. Huh? So, certain people need 21 years before the house basic able to enhance on them. See? Huh? So, Feng Shui is for three generations. So, Whenever we use the house facing, as a Feng Shui practitioner, you see that the patriarch or the matriarch go hope level. <laughs> you understand what I mean by go hope level? Today, the person who asks you to come and actually check on the Feng Shui is actually a farmer. Oh, he's still a farmer already. Lah. What else can you change for him? Go Evo. Every month, the most he made is 5,000 ringgit. So now he said, you ask me to make 5 million again. Okay. <laughs> so the hope is placed on future generation. Okay. Activate the house facing. Yes. Which house, uh, let's say over, over a period, uh, shift house a few times, which house you take? No, uh, the one that you're currently uh, saying, shift house, that one harm you stagnant there. Let's say your parent one. Uh, parent one, then your parent is for the future generation. Your one, you for your future generation. The least we are staying now. Ah, for your future generation. So the minute you choose house facing to activate your valve, you know that the current house are activating the feng shui facing as for future generation. The children also stay inside there. Ah, for your own children or your generation. So the previous house don't come now. Not don't come already. Hurt you all gone already. Uh, for them, today you have appendix, appendix cut already. Don't count. Cannot already cut now. You got the scar there already, already disappear already. So that means implanted in you already. So what if you say this one already activated nice? Then you got uh, a better life already, you go and shoot another house. Yes. So this house is. Same thing, ma, a tree growing. When you, this one, maybe from the very beginning, it's all grow very well. You move this tree to another place, it grow even better, go better and better. La. But if you don't manage it, this one already comes stunted already, ma. You move to the next one. Same la, no matter how you grow, also see ya all. That's how I mean, You have to clear off all these old debts before you restart again, ma. Too long? So that's why Feng Shui is important, why? Because you want your generation to grow well, ma. So that's why future is on house facing. So when we do Feng Shui, why the house facing is always number one? Now you understand? Because we always look forward to the future generation. Whatever for the current, we still do in all the layouts where you conserve, and also we gave you plants, you can rely on others, and also we gave you articles so that it become direct. So to have a complete home tree, now do you know why everything needs to be there? If it's not there, it's not complete. Huh? Not complete, the Feng Shui master is the master who determines your future. I say facing, you got no choice, but nothing to rely on, so you only do facing for future generation. Right? If they say you want direct, you ask him to come again, so I make the decision whether you should or you should not. Because nothing is left behind for you in black and white. Answer me, but now, when in Eastern I they provide you everything in black and white and I gave you the tips and I tell you in free lesson like this, you make the choice, you make the decision and yet 
everything is inside, within your control. Within your control. You understand what I mean? So all you need is to just convey to us your problem and we will give you a suggestion, go back and do this, 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 then you will solve this problem. At times you say that I need it to be direct, at times I need it to rely, it's all there. So we call it the complete set of feng shui, that's what it means. Okay? So at times people say, hey, the house facing her, I want to solve her. Not important, I just put plants can. It's high. So big surface, don't want to paint. Because very expensive, I'll uh, paint outside, which can call. Just only use plant can, can also. But not complete them. So, what about your future generation? You make the choice, I didn't make the choice. I cannot force you. Do you understand that? Your decision in that particular aspect, you have to come to. You know? Be very clear on it as it is. Okay. So today we are only learning on fish tank. Not even fish pond. Nah. <laughs> the difference between fish pond and fish tank. Nah, you, you, we are teaching you fish tank, not fish pond. Okay. But I must first differentiate between fish tank and fish pond. What's the difference between fish pond and fish tank? What do you want for? What is on the ground? What is on the ground? In the no, no, no. What is on the ground? Apart from that, you see one big one small. Have you seen a tank where you keep arowana? Wow, very big. They call it a pond. In the outdoor. In the indoor, you call it tank. Aquarium. In Feng Shui, it's like this. When you have on the ground, on the ground, when you dig it deep, dig it deep into the ground, make it into a pond. How deep? Eh? How deep also as long as it's deep, deep in the ground, in the ground, with the width, width, you know, not length, you know, width, at least six feet wide. Then it's known as pond. If you have a 20 feet long one, with only two feet wide, it's still a tank. <laughs> even though it's in the ground. Even though it's in the ground. So, fish pond or fish tank always talk about the width. Don't talk about the length. Okay? Talk about the width. And if it's in the ground, six feet wide, then call a pond. That's it. Have you seen it, a tank? When you put it on the ground, right? Very shallow, sticky fish, huh? small, small one. Right? That one is known as fish tank, not fish pond. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you put it in your garden, indoor, outdoor, put it on the ground, or put it above ground. As long as it is less than six feet, it is still fish tank. Okay? So fish pond is in the ground. Six feet wide, at least six feet wide. But today we are not going to talk about that. Most of you know if your house have length size of ten thousand square feet, that only can have fish pond. If not, in our species, see what Too much water in our species. Okay. Okay. Understand? Huh? So, one time uh, you must understand uh, how to differentiate fish tank, fish pond. Next time I teach you fish pond, you know, hey, what do you mean by fish pond? <laughs> uh, you talk about fish tank, uh, you talk about fish tank. In the feng shui studies, water generates wealth, as it is. Mountain generate descendants, that's what we call it. So, when there's mountain, you have more descendants. When you have water, it brings more wealth. That's what it means. Uh. But wealth in feng shui, in water sense, right? In feng shui, in water sense is actually used to overcome and subdue before 
in general.